Cody Harrod. Thank you for being on the call and congratulations on your March Associate Spotlight. I hope that brought a little bit of happiness and optimism to your to your inbox. Yeah, it did. For sure. Good. Well, we start always with just if you could give me a little background, your name, what your title is, what you do at Adafio. Yeah, so I'm Cody Harrod. I'm a senior systems engineer at Adafio. Um, primarily working with clients, mostly consulting uh, with clients in their IT departments, probably more, more around like the server infrastructure. On-prem? Uh, on, yes, cloud, I all mean, of it. Yeah. yeah ap applications, uh, you know, things things like that. Whereas the networking to me is, is more, uh, you know, firewalls, switches, uh, th things like that. Okay. Okay. And what is it that you like about your job? Or what or, or maybe I back up. What got you into being an engineer? Actually, starting out, I, I wasn't I wasn't even uh, going to school for anything related to IT. Um, I actually started out as a pre-med student of all did things. You? Yeah, <laughs> I did. Started out as pre-med uh, going to school. I uh, always had an interest in computers and technology. Once I got to college, I actually got a part-time job at the, in the IT department. I used to go by there. Oh. Yeah, I used to go by the IT office at my college and hang out with the the nerds all the time, the IT guys. Um, Brian Brown was actually one of those those guys, so he worked there. Um, <clears throat> so uh, got a part-time job there, 20 hours a week. Dropped out of school for about a year. Um, mm -hmm. Started working there full-time. And uh, eventually, I decided to go back and you know finish my degree up. But mm -hmm. yeah, been in it, been in it ever since. So, isn't it interesting? I love the fact that there's so many of our engineers that that originally didn't ever anticipate or start off like that wasn't their calling. Now some it was, but I would say for the most part, there's a lot of other uh, interests that somehow led them to the path of IT. Yeah, for me it was just you know always uh, back in high school I used to I used to work on uh, people's computers and stuff on the side, so I've always had you know just had an interest in it. And uh, once I got into the pre med stuff, didn't re realize it really wasn't something I was interested in, so kind of pivoted from there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you were thinking of pre med, was there a particular focus? Uh, I actually was looking at uh, RN, just registered okay. register nurse. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you know, I, I can see that they do kind of have a certain similarities because you are helping people through areas that they need support, um, maybe not so much with their health of their body, but health of their IT. I do think that there's a lot of, there's a parallel and that you do have, you come across from what I know of you, Cody, is a very amicable and very caring person who has the ability and a knack for setting people at ease and giving them some sense of uh knowing that you're there to help and get them through it. So for what it's worth, you're you're still kind of in a, you're kind of a registered nurse in a sense of just helping with the technology part. Yeah, it's, there's, there's a lot of similarities there for sure. It's, I've, I've always had a, I've, I've always been about, you know, helping others, you know, serving others. Like that's, mm -hmm. you know, it's always just kind of been ingrained in me, you know, yeah. um, my parents are that way, you know, it, it, yeah, definitely a lot of similarities there. It's interesting how when you do those personality tests or if you ever do like a career, you know, to determine like what it is that you would be good at, I'd be interested to see what yours was if you did one of those. Um, yeah, mine was being a counselor or an artist. And those are two <laughs> things really? that I really love. Uh, and I still do art and I do yoga, which is kind of counseling. But um, you do find that there's some some truth to all of that. Yeah, my uh my crystal nose is uh uh i'm in the motivator section <laughs> oh yeah very good that's so. what amy langston is too i actually love crystal nose it's actually one of the questions that i ask because i do think it's quite accurate and especially in how to communicate with our peers i find that very helpful um if you use the tool you can actually uh put an email into the email template and it will help you communicate to that person better than, you know, just sending them an email. I'll like, have to check that out. 
Yeah. Like Kenny, who president CEO, he's very much like brevity is key. If it's not within the first three sentences, you've lost him. So make sure <laughs> when you send him a message, it is not a novel. Not going to work. <laughs> not going to work. No long. Not going to work. <laughs> he's going to be like, let's schedule a call. Let's get, let's just get this on a call. <laughs> so. Well, um, you kind of already got in a little bit, but just if you could go a little bit more specific to what is it that you like most about your job? I mean, obviously, uh, I will. You get to live in Florida in 80 degree weather and sunny. So remote <laughs> has to be part of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, the main thing is, is you know, the people, the people yeah. and the culture is, is probably the main thing at Adafio. You know, a lot of the people that I work with, I've I've worked with for on and off for a long time. Um you know, that, that always, you know, makes, makes things, uh, say easier, but, you know, oh. when you're working with, working with friends and people that, you know, it's, it's always better. So, so that, and, you know, just our culture with, uh, um, and the flexibility, um, that Adafio provides working here, you know, the remote yeah. thing, that's, that's great, uh, it for is. me, works really good for me. I realize it's not for everybody, but, you know, I'm, I'm pretty, self-motivated and self-driven yeah. uh so it, it really works well for me mm -hmm. having that flexibility and you've got a pretty pretty um awesome group of folks that you do work with as you mentioned and your leader uh leaders i think you know they that camaraderie and that ability to communicate openly and and feel respected and that's it goes a long way so for sure yeah yeah it's a big it's a big part of why 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 i like working here for sure and, you know, one thing I always, from working at Adafio, I, and my previous job, we really, my previous job, we really didn't have like a set of core values up until like they did it, they did eventually we did get them. That really does make a huge difference when, you know, when I talk to college students or people that are recreering, it's like, look at their mission, their core values, look at their vision, make sure those align with you what you want, because it really does impact how you're going to work and how that's going to impact you off the clock as well, you know? Yeah, that's, so. it does, you know, and that's, that's part of the reason, you know, that I, that, that's another reason I came over to Adafio. I was working for a, another MSP, you know, before this, and we just didn't really line up on a lot of those things. Yeah. And, you know, I had to get the heck out of there. <laughs> Yep. If it doesn't align, it, it won't align internally and externally. It will start to impact you in ways that you doesn't always, it kind of creeps up, but it does end up creeping in. Well, because that, uh, that question leads me to like, if you could, if you could provide someone interested in your field and IT, what, what kind of advice would you give them? Yeah. So for me, um, you know, I started pretty young in the field. I think to me, the best, the best way to learn is just by doing it. So mm -hmm. You know, finding a way to get in there and start, um, you know, whether that's you start a degree or, you know, get some certifications or something and get a job working on a help desk and, you know, just learn from people that are more experienced than you and have more knowledge than you. And, uh, you know, that's that's probably the best way I would, yeah. I would say to learn in the, in the IT world. Yeah. Stay curious, stay open. Yeah, and, stay open. And to continue to learn. Because He'll even when you today. get the degree, it doesn't mean you're done and one and done, which That's is with right. everything in life. But uh, you, I think more specifically when it comes to IT, how quickly things change, you have to stay ahead of the curve with all the updates and the new you do. Yeah. shifts, it's, Microsoft it's just, 365, all of it. Yeah. It's just constant, you know, pretty much <laughs> constant learning all the time. You never, never finish. So, but you know... Besides that, I would say having an always willing to help, you know, yeah. attitude is really, like, it goes a long way. You know, if, you, if you're easily frustrated by people's problems and creative problem solving, it's probably not the field for you. You have to have a lot of patience and, and you know, the ability to stay calm and, and figure things out, you know. Mm -hmm. That's a good call out. And I think that's immensely valuable and i hope that people that watch it watch this actually will appreciate that because it's so true and often under um ex we don't express that enough but those soft skills are so valuable yeah because it's easy to get frustrated right you know mm -hmm. um 
you have stuff getting thrown at you, customers that are <laughs> uh, clients that are not nice to you, and you know, so you just you have to uh, you have to do uh, um, de-escalate. <laughs> yeah, de-escalate. Kill them with kindness is what I say. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I've used that before. So, what would you be doing if you weren't in IT? Yeah, so I probably would be doing, probably would be running my own business, uh, something in in something related to uh, the culinary world, probably. Yeah. Um, I actually was considering when I was in high school going to culinary school for a bit. Cooking is big. I love to cook. Uh, it's always kind of been a little dream of mine to have mm-hmm. something like that, you know. Um, food truck, catering, rest, rest something, restaurant. Yeah. You know. So yeah, if I wasn't doing IT, pro- probably something something along those lines. I wish that you were going to be in one of our offices in Arkansas for our barbecue. I know. <laughs> cook off. That'd be great. Now we're going to just take pictures. Maybe we'll get you on Teams and we'll eat it in front of you, and you'll have to be like, what? <laughs> okay, that's not an advantage of working remote, but Here you'll you be go. like, I, I know where to go find it. <laughs> Well, what is something unique about you that maybe most people don't know? Yeah, so I lived in uh, Eastern Europe for about seven years, Romania more specifically. So I, from the time I was 11 till about 18. No kidding. There. Not nonstop. We came back once for eight months. Uh huh. Went back again. So I took about three years of Romanian um, and, and from a high school professor. My brother and I did. Yeah. So I'm pretty, pretty fluent, can read, write, you know, speak. That is impressive. Pretty, pretty fluent. You know, kids pick stuff up pretty quick. All Don't of our they? Friends, Their brains are like sponges. Yeah. <laughs> All of our friends were Romanian. Not many of them spoke English, so it kind of forced us to, yeah. you know, use it. My parents didn't do as well. They they understand a lot of it, uh, and they can read it, uh, but they don't yeah. speak it very well. <laughs> What brought you what brought you to Romania? Uh so my dad, my my whole family have been farmers their whole life. Okay. Um my grandparents extended family, my dad. Um we actually went over there to work with some farm communities and some local churches. Um he was uh-huh. he was working with, you know, some of the farmers there on like local or on better farming practices, more efficient, really? modern farming uh-huh. practices, things like that, helping them increase their, you know, food production in these small rural communities, things like that. So, so yeah, we went That's over there doing just, just aid work and stuff. What but, kind of farming in particular? Like corn, veg, you know, vegetables, mm-hmm. like uh, corns, tomatoes, peppers, beans, is diet produce. A good, is, is, is diet an important part of your life because of work growing up on dealing with, I mean, I don't know, it's, did you it, eat really well? Did you eat it, like? garden vegetables yes yeah kind of yeah it's always been you know it's been important I'd, I'd say uh you know we all fall off the wagon sometimes after after I had my kids uh put on a little weight there for for a few years got the cheeks <laughs> puffing out good but but you know I got back on track uh eating healthy again so yeah. uh yeah it's definitely important love homegrown vegetables I've always eaten eating that way, you know, and then when we came back to the States, uh, I was about 18. I went off to college and my dad went back to farming, uh, growing tomatoes. Um, tomatoes. yep. So growing tomatoes. So, so, uh, I'd go home in the summers and work and we always had, you know, vegetables. So I can't stand store-bought, st- <laughs> store-bought tomatoes. I know. I'm it, you are, yeah. <laughs> you've been ruined. You've been ruined for sure. Are, are what is some of your, Going back to your your culinary you know, interest, and then of course growing up in the farm world, do you have any particular recipes or anything that you enjoy cooking more than more than other others? Things? Yeah, uh, I mean it's just so much. Love to make chili. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's always good. Um, yeah, I don't know if I have. I, I make all kinds of stuff. So is there a particular me- eth- particular you know kind of eth- cuisine or ethnic food that you like more than others? Uh, probably my favorite two, uh, would have to be probably traditional Mexican food, not Tex-Mex. 
mm-hmm. like that a lot. I, I grew up, you know, around a lot of uh, of migrant workers. We had a lot of guys from Mexico, so they were always making really good, uh, authentic Mexican yeah. cuisine. And it is not Tex, it's not Tex Mex. So, you know, all the fresh veggies and 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 stuff. So, it's probably my favorite. Well, that's one of my favorites too. It's it's between the authentic like carne asada or the those tacos, you know, with the cilantro yeah. and fresh onion, and that's by far one of my favorite things. And then, of course, my Indian. I love Indian food. Indian's good too. <laughs> so. Romanian cuisine is nothing to write home about. Is it not? No, okay. No, no. <laughs> okay. Good to I mean, know. There's some that stuff another... that's okay, like. But it's it's it, they're not known for their cuisine. <laughs> yeah, it's a, I think you know I don't think I've seen many of those on the on the corner of restaurants no. on the corner that have that name on it. No, no, <laughs> you won't find too many. I like Italian food too. Uh, living in Europe, um, like authentic everywhere in Europe has good authentic Italian food. Yeah. Uh, so you know the Italian food over there is really good. It's not like New York Italian. It's a little bit, a little bit different, but isn't it? I was yeah. in Italy for high, for I'm sorry, for college. I went there uh, for almost three months in Italy. Yeah, yeah, they're Italian. It's very simple. It's very clean, yeah. very light, yeah. not as heavy, and you know, you don't get like a bunch of it. But even their pizzas are just so vastly different than here. Yeah, not like the yeah. New York stuff. It's just piles of piles. Exactly. Of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just shovel it on your plate and just yeah bit off-putting at times well so I have one more question and then I'll let you get back to it and you did kind of talk a little bit about it but um we always end on this question and it is everyone at Adopio has a story of what brought them here and if you wouldn't mind sharing yours yeah so I was working at another touch on a while ago I was working at yeah. another MSP and uh wasn't wasn't too happy with you know just the growth the opportunity there for growth and and whatnot um so my my friend my good friend ryan uh ryan brown was he just had started at adafio i think he had been there for two months <laughs> and he texted me one day and he's like hey man you should apply We're, they're hiring um so i got an interview with paul peterson greg phillips and kendall harris oh my it god went really, it went really yeah. well <laughs> it was almost five years ago Wow. Um, and yeah, they hired me, uh, pretty much the next week and, uh, you know, it's been, it's been great. Yeah. So that you're coming on your five year then, aren't you? Yep. Coming up. Congrats on that. So what number were you when you started? Do you even know? Like five years ago. Employee was... number 67, six, okay, so we we've. Something We've over like almost that. doubled in size then since mm-hmm. then. Yeah. So, That's yeah. pretty impressive. So time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> I know it does. <laughs> Greg Phillips, Kendall, and who else? Paul Peterson. Oh, Paul Peterson. Yep. Great folks. That's who that's that's who hired me. Paul was was uh my boss at the time. So <laughs> And Kendall's in Florida too. Do you guys he live is. near each other? I live about two hours from Kendall. Okay. So. He's in Orlando area. Okay. Yep. Well, um, that's all that I have to share. And I so appreciate your time and giving, getting, a, getting everybody to know a little bit more about you. Thank you for that, Cody. Yep, no problem. Well, have a great rest of your day and weekend. And I look forward to catching up with you in April. Yes, ma'am. Hope to see you then. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.